Hey guys, it's Melanie with Heartfelt Creations coming back to you with our new release, the Iris Garden Collection. Today we are going to focus on making these beautiful flowers. And as you can see, they are very detailed, but secret, the mold does most of the work for you. So I'm going to give you the tips and tricks to make it even easier after that comes out of the mold to get all this 3D effect. But um, by the end of the video, we will be have made this card. And if you stick around, you'll get a sneak peek of next week's card, which is definitely irises that stand loud and proud. So stick around to the end. And for now, let's go play. Okay, guys, here we go. We are going to start off today. I've got most everything pre-cut I've tried to eliminate um, lots of steps to try to speed the video along for you. I know my videos tend to be a little longer than most, um, so I am trying to work on that. I do realize this, um, these, these flower videos do take a, a little bit of extra time, so I am trying to shorten the videos for all of you. So I've got all of our layers here. And I have cut the card base to be seven by nine, scored in half at three and a half. I have cut two layers here, and I am using the Black Friday special dies that came out. Now, I do not have the packaging for these, but they were the um, Black Friday 2022 special, the Slim Basic Rectangles and the Slim Eyelet Rectangles. I will have all of these in my supply list listed down below um, for your order and convenience if you need any of the links to those. But um, I am using the largest of both of these die sets and then the third largest. So that's what I'm using for my layers. And we are going to be doing a white card and the pattern card. Now for my second sample here, I'm changing it up a little bit color-wise. I'm going with a green layer instead of the yellow. And I'm also changing the embossing folder. Um, pretty much, that's pretty much all I've changed. So I just, just because of my pattern choices that I had. Um, so I am going to glue these together. And I'm doing that just to give the eyelet along the edge a little extra, um, a little extra support is really what I'm doing that for. Then we're going to attach the card base um, to the back here. Then I've got this pattern piece here, which is also cut from the die, which we'll layer here. I've got these two layers cut from the die, which we will glue together. I'm using Dry's Clear Glue. I'm going to pop that up with foam dots and adhere it to the center. And then I have used um, a spellbind. Actually, both of these are spellbinders dies. They're just different 3D dies that I've used, and I can link those down below as well. Um, and I've used that, and I'm going to put that there to complete my base. So I'm going to hurry up and do all of that for you real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back here. We've got our card base all complete. And isn't that gorgeous? That The way that um, offsets that 3D embossing folder. Heartfelt Creations currently doesn't carry embossing folders or I would be using an embossing folder by them. But I just thought this made a really pretty background for um, the vase just to give it a little extra dimension. So for the vase, I've stamped out the vase itself on a piece of the pattern paper. It's very pale. I've used periwinkle. And then I edged the outsides. And for that, I used the classic floral vase um, stamp and die. Um, that is from a different collection. And for the sentiment today, I'm using the Cheerful Note Sentiments and the Album Tags and Accent Dies, which will be cutting it out. I just wanted to show those because I'm adding those in um, 
as extras to make this card with. Okay, so I'm going to set the card base aside so we don't get it inky. And then um, we will, I've already pre-stamped these so that I can just show you how I colored them real quick. Um, I have stamped the yellow. This is Chrome Archival Ink here. And this here is Deep Purple. And I've done the little um, flourish in Periwinkle. I've done the branch in an olive, the olive green in Archival. So for coloring it in, I'm going to just use the chrome yellow in a blender brush. And I'm just going to go over them. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to go over them with a little bit of color. For the deep purple ones, I'm going to use the periwinkle. Because I want this to be pale. Because I'm going to add color later. So I just want some pale color in there right now. The um, little flourish... Uh, um, we are actually going to be inking and glittering that here in just a little bit. So it is going to just be left alone right now. And for the olive branch, olive branch, the branch that I colored olive, we are just going to take the olive itself. And the reason I like blender brushes is because it gives a lighter inking to the actual full stamp the full strength of the stamp. So when you go over it like that with a blender brush compared to a dauber, um, it gives you a really pale ink. And when we go in with the dauber later, and believe me, I love my stack and store daubers, but when we go in with the dauber here in a little bit, I will show you how it's completely different. In this instance, with the yellow flower, I'm just going to leave it the yellow. We're not going to ink the edges. We're just going to leave it yellow. But for these here, we're going to ink them more and change their color. But you see how this light color here has stayed light there in the center. And we're going to blend here on the edges to give it more dimension. So it's just different techniques depending on what, what your... Um, desired effect is. Now for the thinking of you, this I actually stamped too close to be able to cut it out with our die. So I went ahead and re-stamped it and I'm going to do a little multi-inking here um, with three different colors. I'm going to go in with Periwinkle first. And I did this earlier and it came out a little darker than my original. So we're going to see, I'm going to see how this one turns out. So I went in the center with Periwinkle just to give it a pale color. Then I came in with some magenta or maje majestic purple, excuse me. And this has more of a pinkish pinkish tone to it. And I just kind of blotched it around a little bit. And then I went ahead and die cut it. And I'm going to do that real quick here. Okay. And then I'm going to take my dauber with the deep purple. I'm trying to purposely do this one lighter this time than that one there in, in the because I want to have options with my finished project. So I'm, uh, I'm attempting, attempting to go lighter. You always can go darker.
Okay, I've gotten all the way around. Now I'm trying to even it up a little bit because it's I'm rushing. <laughs> and when I rush, it doesn't get as even. So I'm going to try to even it a little bit here. Okay, so let me blend this a little bit more. Let's bring some periwinkle back in here. Where did my brush go? I think it just went flying. Hold on a second. Ha ha. I'm doing this right around the edges to see if I can blend that out just a little bit. Note to self, make sure I clean up my table here underneath me once I'm done. Because I can see that back of that white card base. Getting all this ink on it in just a second. And I'm going to pull in just a tiny bit of the, matter of fact, I may not even, I may not even put any ink on it. Just get a little bit more of the pink in there. Okay, did I get a little lighter? I did get a little lighter. Um, let me get a baby wipe here real quick and clean that ink up before I forget. So I am going to go ahead and um die cut these out real quick and i'll be right back and we can ink the edges okay here we go i have got these all die cut out and um we are going to go ahead and color these purple blooms and i noticed this one that i had the center of your iris the center is a small bloom so you're going to have one small bloom and you're going to have two larger which is actually the medium in the set so your small bloom needs to be colored on both sides and one of your um, medium blooms needs to be colored on both sides because this one is going to show back here the back side so um I had forgotten to color the back side of this one, so I'm going to color it while we're, while we're working here. So I'm going to start here on this and do the edges like I would normally do any, um, you know, edging of any uh, flower going around with your dauber. And I do want to warn you and preface that don't use a new dauber on the irises. If you have an old dauber, it's better to use the older dauber, even if you don't have one specified for the color. Um, these petals are very jagged. So it's better to go ahead and just use an old dauber that is the similar color. If you don't have you know, one specified for it like I do here. I mean, that's not actually required. I just do it for my own um, designing. But um, but it is really rough on the daubers because of how jagged this edge is. So just beware, just a little tip. Um, but go ahead and darken these edges with your periwinkle first. And you want to do this before you put your flower petals in the mold. It's a lot easier to do the inking beforehand. Okay, now we're going to take the deep purple. And I'm going to go over just the tip. Now, when I do the tip, I always go at, what is that, a 90 degree angle? Um, whereas when I blend with the periwinkle, I was going more at a slant so that it gets more of the actual petal, which I'm going to do more here in a minute. Um, but so I am doing it a little different coming around this second time, getting just the edge and tip itself. And 
And now with the periwinkle, I'm going to almost come in flush. And I'm going to try to blend those two colors together. And I'm almost flat. So first I was at an angle like this. Then with the deeper one, I was just doing the edge like this. Now I'm coming in at almost a flat because I am blending now. And I don't want to get the center because I want the center um, to stay this pale, pale color. But I want to blend those two colors together. It's almost to where you don't see one start and one begin. Alrighty, and see, so you still have the light down the center. And if you want to go back in and darken this edge up again, you can. It's not necessary, but if you like a deep, deep contrast, you can. You can go back in and just in case you softened it a little. So that's that's the final look that you're looking for. So from that to that, big difference. Okay. Oops. Get this one done here real quick. Doing this at an angle. Just so you can see it again. got some thunder and lightning outside hopefully this connection will stay good while I'm doing this going with the deep purple on the edge itself I love that contrast that periwinkle and the deep purple makes such a pretty contrast And then I'm going to blend them together. Okay, once we're done here, I'll hurry up and just ink the back of that one real quick and then I'll show you how we did the little flourish. Hoping that we don't lose power here. Let's see. I'll just use periwinkle I guess on the inside here. This has already been shaped so of course this gives you an idea of how hard it is to color these after they've been shaped, but it's okay. It'll be alright. Some of my actual samples that are going to HC, um, I did this. I forgot the insides or the back. This will be the inside of the petal but or the flower, but I forgot it. But it's, it's okay. It is what it is. And let's, before we forget, let's go ahead and do the backs of these, just in case. Because I know one of them has to have it, but might as well do them both. Get some purple on there, too. Pretty multicolor. And actually, let's go ahead and put some periwinkle, because one of these will show. This one doesn't have a whole lot, so let's go ahead and give this one a two-tone also. So it coordinates with that center a little more. See, we're making a whole different one, huh? We'll use that one for the back one. Okay, because in nature, everything is different, right? 
Okay. Now for this one, we actually use three inks. I brought in a little majestic violet so it ties in with the tag. And um, I went ahead and it's stamped in periwinkle. So then I came and I just quickly colored it some with the majestic violet. No rhyme or reason. I don't want to completely color it because I want some of that periwinkle to still show. And in my actual original sample, I actually stamped these half green or half periwinkle and half green. And this time I decided not to because in my final sample you don't see any of the stems because you're tucking these in behind. So I went ahead and just stamped them all the one color this time. So just thought I'd mention that. And then with the deep purple, I went ahead and just hit some of these knots, like the bumps on this outsides of the edges here. This is nice to have the little triangles points of the stack and store daubers with this. And that just gives for a, a third color tone in there. And that's all I did there. Let's go ahead and put all our ink away. For the leaves, I've already done those. And these are just stamped in leaf green and inked in leaf green. I did the spun or the the blender brush like I showed you lightly in the center before I die cut, and then I did the edges with the dauber afterwards. So that was easy. Like I said earlier, these were just stamped. Um, we didn't do any coloring afterwards. We just did the, um, the blender brushes beforehand, like I showed you earlier. So for, um, once you get your petals, um, cut and colored, then you'll be putting them in the mold, like I've shown you here. And then this is what they come out looking like. Um, and you can see all the detail on those. When they come out of the mold, they have all those ripples already in them, which makes your job a lot easier. So that's how they're gonna come out, and we will use these. And the leaves also come out with texture. But these leaves don't have nearly as much texture as previous molds have, but the leaf in nature also doesn't have as much texture. But you do have the line, the, the, the graining of the line is indented in there, which is nice. So I will put these in here and run these through real quick. Give this a little spray. All right, and there we go. Okay, so we have our two petals, our two mediums and one small, and two mediums and one small. That's all we're gonna need for this flower, these two flowers today, these are extras. And then for this, let me just show you real quick how I finished this. I already have the ones we need today finished, but this is Roshni Chwala's Crystal Clear that I'm using here. Isn't it pretty? Yes, I'm a little spoiled. I went on a little shopping spree and I bought me a bunch of them and um heartfelt did them in bulk so I'm not sure if they'll still be on the website available but they were while supplies last they are at the time I'm recording this still available I don't know if by the time this airs it will still be available but if you search the word bulk on the website um, you can check and see they had prills and different glitters um, available. So for this, what I've done is I've taken my art glitter 
or my art glue with the metal tip and I've done a whole bunch of little dots and then I just lay it down in the glitter or you can sprinkle it and it gives you this iridescent icy looking look to it and that's what I'm going to set that aside because I have my other ones already dry. Alrighty. Close this back up. Okay. So, let's create. Okay. The first thing we're going to do to shape our flowers is we are going to take our... Um, shaping kit and we're going to use our I think this is the six millimeter um, and you've got to think about how we're going to design these this smallest one is going to fold upward then you're going to have one fold downward so this upward one we're going to want the circle here because we want it to cup upwards. Let me get that a little closer. Whoops. <laughs> closer to the camera so you can see. We want it to fold upwards like a clamshell. For this one, we want it to fold downwards. So we're going to shape it from the bottom. So actually both of these are shaped from the bottom because it's going to fold it's going to fold downwards and this one is going to fold upwards if you can see that like so then your other one is going to go in both directions so all three of them bottom line all three of them you're going to shape from the underneath and you're just going in a round circle from underneath and this second one you're going to cut in half so on these first two, we're going to put a hole in the center. I'm using a golf tool. Okay. Then we're going to take two stamens. These are the stamens from the Lily collection that was um, released back in January, I believe. And you're going to go down into the center of your clam, as I call it, a little clam shell. Isn't it cute? And I'm going to put a tiny little drop of hot glue right there just a, just a little bit and then I'm going to put just a tiny little drop up on the edges just a tiny bit just enough to close this just a little bit especially in just one side more than anything Mine's kind of lopsided at the moment. Okay. See if you can see that like that. Yeah. Okay. Then you're going to feed it through the next 
petal. You're going to put a little glue underneath here. And you're going to come down and adhere it like so. Easy peasy, right? Then the last step, we are going to put a little glue on the edge. And what I did is I, whoops, magnetic. I trimmed this a little extra. See which side you want your front and which side you want your back. Okay. Your front, you're going to tuck in and bend down. So I'm going to put some glue on here. And I'm going to tuck it in there. It's going to come down like if your tongue is sticking out. And just hold that for a second. And then your other one is going to do the same thing, but it's going to curl upwards back here. So I also trimmed this a little bit. And slide it back there and have it come upwards. Hold that for a couple seconds. And you have your iris. Easy peasy. Now, to decorate it, what I did is I put glue all along this center section here where you see the stamp, solid stamp area. And I sprinkled um, in my sample, I sprinkled Flower Soft, which is something, a product I've had in my stash for ages. You could also use um, our prills that we carry. We could use prills in there also. You could use a lot of things. You could use a marker. You could just color it in with a marker and make it darker. Or in my card next week, um, which I'll show you here at the end of the video, it on, on the yellow ones, I didn't do anything to them. I did the purple ones like this, and then the yellow ones, I didn't put anything on them. I left them just like this where the darker it shows itself. You can see it in the stamping that it's darker there. So um, you can finish them off any way you'd like. Now I did do the winding of the wire here with um, just basic florist um, tape, which you can get at the Dollar Tree. And that way it can go right into your um, vase and it doesn't show. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and do this other one real quick. Go ahead and whoops, shape these all from the back real quick. Remember our two-tone one here is the one that's going to go in the back. I'll go ahead and clip that off right now so I remember. 
go ahead and trim it too. Make sure I got it going in the right direction. I just find trimming it made it fit and, and notch better. Okay, that's going to be my little tongue. Then we're going to put our little holes. Get our two stamen. We're going to go from the back side and from the inside of this one. I should have poked it from that side so that the hole's going in the right direction. Okay. I glued just that back side this time to see if that would there you go it looked like that side was gonna rip so I went ahead and just glued down that seam right there and that saved it okay Almost out of glue. I need to get a glue stick. Much better. Give this baby a tongue. There we go. Isn't she pretty? Okay, let's do there tape real quick. I'll just show you how to do this on one of them. Um, oops, wrong glue. I would burn my fingers for sure. What I do is I put a little bit of glue on the edge just to get me started. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to catch. Especially when you can't see what you're doing.
I take the tape off of the roll so that I can spin the flower. Got this caught here. And then once I get it to where it's not falling off. Then I can spin and tighten, spin and tighten, just to make it taut. And I only do this when the when I'm, I'm putting it in the vase. They're going to show. I've I've never done I've not done this very often. This vase is tall, so I wasn't able to use the stems that we carry. I use the stems on the other card. They were actually very handy on the other card. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more glue here in the middle. Okay, just keep spinning and twisting and keeping it taut. And we'll get down here at the end. Okay, I'm just going to just spin this here for a second so this can catch. Alrighty, there you go. Okay, I am going to go and do that to this one right here real quick. And grab my flower soft and I will be right back and we will put this vase together okay guys I am back here and we are going to do flower soft on this petal here these petals here real quick I am going to just drag the art glitter or art glue down each of these petals using that darkened area on the stamp as a guide but I do drag it out a little farther than that you can do the same thing with your prills if you have prills you could also do it with glitter and I poured just so you could see here a little closer let me make sure it focuses I just push it, I, I just put it on there because it's going to have to grab. So I just kind of stack it on there so it has a chance to grab the glue. And I just kind of pat it and then shake it off. I'm using a coffee filter here underneath to catch all the, or a lot of the mess. Then use your handy dandy golf tool to tap from the other side and then to come back in here and clean up any of this little, the little pieces that don't belong up in your, deep in your flower that are loose. Ooh. 
and there you go. Okay. This is the spring mixture that I'm using here by Flower Soft. I do not know if these are available anymore. They, like I said, they were from my stash. You guys probably all have them. Um, let me know in the comments if you actually have them and if you've used them. Because I had actually never used them. I had them in my stash forever and had never used them. So... I got them out and I used them. Something liberating about using something you haven't used before. So, here's our card. And here is the one we're working on. I am sorry that this video is going long. Well, it's not really long for me, is it? But, we are... Making a masterpiece, right? Okay, get an idea of where you're going to want your flowers. The nice thing about having these stems is you can maneuver them. I'm going to go ahead and attach um, the vase to my card blank so it's not moving around. I'm going to use some foam dots here towards the bottom. You want to still leave room though for your um, your stems and stuff to come through. So. backing of all, all these little little foam pads okay I'll set this a little bit oh I love this blue and green and that leaves this to where it's loose here so we can fit stuff in it that's what I did that for so I can now come down here and decide okay well that's where I'm gonna gonna put her And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of glue here. Just to tack those in place. That one's not going as far as I want it to go, so I'm going to nip off the end and try again. There we go. And then 
this one I want a little higher. There is probably good, so. Okay, and remember, if you don't put the wires all the way down, then you still have maneuverability here. So that's the nice thing about them being on the wires. So now we can start building this bouquet and you can start by layering these in here to start covering up some of your wires strategically because you don't want your glue showing. So that's how I came in here and did some of this designing here. So I started like that and I was like, okay, I like that. I'm just putting the glue towards the bottom. And remember, every bouquet you make is gonna look a little different. If you go to the grocery store, every, every set of flowers you look at, they're all different. Pull this one up just a little bit and we will disguise that with some of the other branches in there. So now we have these so we can come in and maybe tuck some of that. I'm also going to have the bow there too so that will also help. We have some of those. We're going to have these also. And remember, we're going to have the tag here. We're going to have the bow also. So just think, you know, be thinking about all these different aspects when you're designing. You might want to think about where you're going to have the rest of your leaves before they're all down. I have flower soft coming off of that that one. That's funny. Okay. So let's see which of these are hooked in and which aren't. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook that one in and put him behind here, uh, maybe up a little bit more. And we'll put this, this one behind this tall one. I'll lift this up just a little bit so I can see here. So now we'll sti start sticking some of these in. Just realize that some of these little guys haven't been poked out. Alrighty. <laughs> that one isn't either. Let me go ahead and poke all these out real quick.
this one behind here, maybe? Or do I want it on top of here? Hmm. I'm gonna like it between there. Sorry for the beeping in the background. It sounds like one of my friends must be online. Um, let me put some up here. Now I'm going to put some of these purples in. I have a space up here that I really want to have some color in. I think that will look really pretty up there. Still poking out. I just like this white space here. I think that would be really pretty to have some poking out right there. Oh, yeah. I love the, the tail ends of the bouquets when you start getting to the tail ends and you can see the little areas that that are crying out for for a little a little more something something. I think we'll put a little bit up here. Maybe not even maybe just a peak. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. And then do we just have the one more? Let's see. Nope, we got one other one over here because we're going to need some purple over here. So we'll do some here. And this little peak up here. And then maybe tuck some in down in the middle. Or do I want it over here? I think you know what I think I'm going to do I think I'm going to do surgery We're going to take one of them, and we're going to stick it right down here. So this green leaf isn't completely all green. And then we're going to stick this other one right down here. Okay. And then let's see what else this one wasn't hooked in and we wanted to push that one down so we just had some tips and then this one is going to go underneath this leaf so we have just some height right there. Let's see, I think this one is the only one left. And stick it right down in here for some purple balance over here. And then I want a little bit, maybe not the whole thing, I don't want the whole thing. Put 
a little bit of that right there. See if there's anywhere that needs that last leaf. I don't think so. I think we are done. All right. Now to finish it up, all you have to do is put your bow in. This is crinkle seam binding. It was made with just regular seam binding in alcohol ink. We made it at a crop um, one time and it was so much fun to make and I have used it very sparingly because I love it so much. So we'll attach that right under there and then trim those and our card is done as promised i'm back here at the end to share with you next week's sneak peek this card is my way of just wanting to let you know that i appreciate you hanging out with me till the very end and if you, by any chance, have learned anything today or have enjoyed or and have enjoyed this video, if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So until next time, keep crafting. Bye.